And when I say recovery in my everyday work, I use the word recovery to mean recovery from addictions, from substance use disorders, from substance use. But what I truly believe is that what fosters recovery from addictions, namely connection and community, actually fosters recovery and healing and hope in addressing what ails us as individual humans and as a society as a whole connection and community, not as abstract or shapeless ideas, but as a concrete set of supports and actions and systems and relationships are the answer to many of the, the nexus issues that we have, such as addictions, mental health conditions, ACEs, domestic and sexual violence, poverty and hunger and homelessness, and so much more. These conditions don't exist in silence, in silos or in isolation, but rather they're inextricably connected to one another. And problems are bound together, and so are the solutions. The solutions must be holistic and serve whole people at any stage of their healing and their recovery and throughout their lives. To truly address one affliction and eliminate the grip of these scourges in our communities, we must address them all in concert. Our communities must work together and we can do that. As Johan Hari wrote in Chasing the Scream, the opposite of addiction isn't sobriety, it's connection. If we created humane, caring and connected communities where people truly cared for and helped one another and live lives of service to one another where we all gave and we all gained, it would not be merely reactive and treat the problem as something to be eradicated, but would help uh, would help protective factors flourish and would prevent many ad adverse conditions from starting and from spreading from person to person and across the generations. Recovery is prevention and prevention is recovery. Over nearly 20 years in health and human services, I spent four years working at a battered women's shelter, helping women rebuild their lives in new communities and their children overcome their traumas. I've worked to mitigate poverty and hunger and many other things that far too many people experience. And I've been in the substance use field since 2013, though I've lived my whole life in the shadow of addiction among family and friends. In March of 2018, I moved to the Loma Valley to serve at North Central Vermont Recovery Center. And I quickly realized that there's a special community of people and organizations that truly care about one another. I had a vision and my colleagues, including the then director of the organization believed in me and the vision and our organization grew dramatically. In September of 2018, I became the director. Then on February 15th, 2019, a little over three years ago, Jenny Ray Tetro passed away from a fentanyl overdose after a six year battle which started with pain medications prescribed after she was hit in the face by a boyfriend. About a month later, the Tetro family and I and some close allies started working together and Jenna's Promise was born. The early months involved a lot of discussion around barriers and what did or didn't work and what did or didn't exist, what there was or was not enough of, but barriers and obstacles and holes quickly became solutions and dreams. And we dreamed big and ambitiously about how to fill the gaps and never have once have any of us ever told each other that anything wasn't possible. We believed in each other and our ability to turn those ambitions into realities. We believe that if our solutions were actually solutions and our ideas were effective, then the money and support would be earned. We acted with urgency and conviction. We turned heartbreak and tragedy and pain into motivation. We leaned on each other and others. We learned from others and brought them in on what we wanted to do because no person or organization or town is an island. The Tetro family bought a church in Johnson using Jenna's life insurance, hence the name Jenna's house. And eventually we landed on the idea of using the upstairs as a multi-purpose event center and community space. We realized that the downstairs could be made into a satellite facility for the recovery center to provide direct services. And we could combine what Jenna's promise and what the recovery center wanted to do and what the community needed. We 
my dream was to care for people more holistically, including having a gym, the moms and recovery support program, a playground, a telehealth hub, nutrition services, and much more. I wanted our programs and services to concurrently address, address mental health and well-being and physical health and well-being, as our system of care often se segregates mental health and physical health. And that's what we did. With support from donors and foundations and grants, we invested hundreds of thousands of dollars and made it a world-class community and recovery center and gathering place for the community. We opened Jenna's house on August 14th, 2021. The Tatro family, while providing many other services, including recovery coaching, support groups, financial assistance, such as recovery residence scholarships, transportation, and more, then started Ray of Hope Recovery Residence, the first the state's first and currently only level three recovery residents, which again brought in so much support from the community in all its forms. Something truly special was how the town of Johnson and area residents supported us every step of the way. There wasn't the nimbyism or not in my backyard mentality or even outright obstruction I've seen elsewhere. They also brought it, bought an old lumber yard, and have since started JP's Promising Goods and Jenna's Promise Roasting co Coffee Roasting Company mm. as social enterprises. The process, the profits from of which uh, will go directly back to support the nonprofit and its operations, and will sustain the organization along with other funding streams into the future. More recovery residences have opened, including a home for men and transitional apartments, representing a spectrum of much needed housing options. Prior to that, there wasn't a single recovery residence bed in the Lamoille Valley. And the Tatro family also bought and are renovating the historic 1890s Barrow building in downtown Johnson, which will provide yet more recovery housing upstairs and Jenna's Promise Cafe, yet another social enterprise. It should open this spring. All of these businesses employ people in recovery who can then go on to work at recovery friendly workplaces that we have lined up. We're also working at, at workforce housing and other, other types of housing and at building more employment supports in partnership with many local businesses. Finally, for now, Don and Greg also bought an, uh, an old subway building to be converted into a medical office space for the Johnson Health Center, which is bringing mat services, nurse practitioners, and other services back to Johnson where none existed. There also, there, there aren't, all, that isn't all that's going on, and this isn't nearly all we have planned, it's just the beginning. It's taken a village to raise this child, and we're creating a recovery village that brings a full continuum of services and supports and opportunities to the region. It is incredible what has happened in just three years and the restorative effect that it's had on the community. It has improved services, built stronger connections, reduced stigma associated with substance use, and served many and saved many lives. We're not nearly where we want to be, but every day we get closer to a recovery village, a recovery oriented community from which hope emanates and spreads throughout the valley. And we hope that that model and that hope and the example of transformation will spread elsewhere. Through these and other actions, we're beginning to we are working to bolster community and to bring people together and organizations together from around the region and common cause. With all of this in mind, we wanted to share this special place, the spe this special community with people around Vermont and beyond with support from Jenna's Promise and North Central Vermont Recovery Center and others, Recovery Vermont is proud to announce that we'll be holding a recovery leadership conference on April 4th. This conference's theme is it takes a village, new approaches to Vermont's addiction epidemic. It's an all day event and will be held in person for more than 100 guests at Jenna's house in Johnson. Using the state of the art audio visual system at Jenna's house, the event will be simulcast via Zoom webinar for any and all who would like to join us for the special day. This day will feature three internationally and nationally renowned speakers, as well as a special presentation by Jenna's Promise and Recovery Vermont about the Recovery Village. For in-person guests, uh, lunch will be provided and there will be opportunities for book signings and meet and greets and photos of the speakers, as well as tours of Jenna's Promise and the Recovery Village. 
Our opening plenary speaker will be Vermont State Senator and candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives, Keisha Ram Hinsdale. Our uh, keynote speaker will be none other than uh, Johan Hari, um, who wrote Chasing the Scream and uh, Lost Connections. And then finally, we're gonna we're really excited to have Sam back to Vermont um, to talk about the least of us uh, and to share what he's learned uh, in his decades of uh, of work and traveling around the country and around the world, uh, and in particular about hope in the time of fentanyl and meth. So we're really excited to have Sam back and to have these these speakers and to share this recovery village with you.